Well, ah, hi. Um, how are you guys? Um, I hope uh, that you guys are doing very well. Uh, welcome back. Um, uh, I hope uh, that um, things have been going very well. The week is also running very well. Uh, welcome to to the Now Podcast um, in collaboration with the uh, Smash Talk Cafe. Uh, and uh, this episode uh, is also coming in uh, collaboration with the uh, Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime, uh, which is one of the organizations that I am working with uh, when it comes to issues to do with um, organized crime, specifically that is on young trafficking uh, and also sex trafficking uh, across uh, East Africa. Uh, from the previous, uh, I think, videos that I've been sharing, uh, there has been a lot of, and a lot of questions uh, people reaching out um, because they really want to understand um, uh, what is this, uh, what do we mean when uh, we talk about um, uh, organized crime. And uh, one of the things that I understand in the simplest way is um, having, uh, I will give an example, uh, people coming together and forming a gang uh, and uh, using this particular gang to do illegal activities uh, or an individual doing illegal activities, uh, for example, uh, if it is smuggling of, of drugs, if it is smuggling of firearms, uh, if it is uh, abducting and also uh, uh, lying to, to different people so that they can move uh, to different places uh, in the purpose, uh, for the purpose specifically for um, uh, labor uh, and also for, for sex uh, because they are different forms. So, uh, one of the key areas that for us as a smart office we are working on is on issues to do with uh, labor and sex trafficking and this is across our uh, east africa either labor and sex trafficking uh, when i started labor is uh, looking into what are the different forms of labor trafficking that are being done across east africa and that is uh, for children those who are coming from tanzania to kenya uh for, for labor going into Qatar. And then so on, so on and so forth. For those that are brought into uh, the streets of Nairobi, uh, cripples, begging, they're being used as beggars. Uh, then for East Africa, and looking at uh, those who are coming from Congo, they are coming from Burundi, um, and also those who are coming from Rwanda, uh, going towards um, going towards scale. Um The reason why we started engaging on issues to do with uh, human trafficking. Um, was uh, for the fact that there is little to none when it comes to human trafficking. Uh, most of the time, if you look at also the, the context uh, uh, when it comes to communities, when it comes to families, when it comes to different um, people that we interact with, uh, there sometimes they have been covered uh, on aspects of to do with the culture. And um, the simplest way is just taking someone from where they were bring him to a different uh, particular particular place, um, uh, lay to them that uh, maybe you're going to give them work or you're going to take them to school. Then when they come, uh, or number one, uh, you give them a, a, a contract that they're not able to read, uh, which is one of the means that they always use. Or if you had promised them to give work, maybe for an office work, they end up doing a different type of work. Then you find the aspects of uh, the wages are really low, uh, finances are very low. Uh, it looks into uh, the aspect of uh, you not giving them their uh, giving them their rights uh, when it comes to labor, and also uh, if it is for children, uh, instead of taking them to school, uh, maybe as you had already promised, uh, but you are making sure that you uh, they work for you. Um, different countries have different laws and. Uh, and most of them have ratified uh, the protocols that have been given under UNDOC uh, and the UNODC, uh, the United Nations, uh, to make sure that there is reduction of uh, issues to do with human trafficking, if it is internally or also externally. However, with the aspect of, for example, porous borders across East Africa, it has made it a little bit easier uh, for, for, people, for movement of people between these different countries, uh, creating a leeway for uh, organizations uh, to take advantage of this, especially recruitment agencies to take advantage of this, then um, uh, push uh, for uh, what, what we call it, um, 
uh, push for the aspect of uh, recruiting different young people, especially vulnerable people from vulnerable communities, so that they can able they can either join the they, they are telling them they're going to get work. Sorry about that. They're going to get work. Then use Kruplos means either to take them to the northern say, northern part of Africa or in Arab countries or uh, the southern part of uh, southern part of Africa and also uh, to the Americas. So when we look at they given the different examples that are given. That's when we uh, start discussing on issues to, uh, to, to do with organized crime. Uh, and an organized crime is not only just human trafficking, we're also looking at smuggling of migrants, especially under, uh, under UNTOC, which is the United Nations Convention Against Transnational uh, Organized Crime. Uh, and its protocols and some of the protocols are looking into, as I mentioned earlier, human trafficking. Uh, the second one is uh, looking into uh, smuggling of migrants. Uh, the third one is looking uh, into smuggling of firearms uh, across different borders. So our aim uh, is to just create an understanding so that uh, people can know that these things are, these things are happening uh, across East Africa. These things are happening in our communities, especially for vulnerable communities. And some of the issues that make these things happen is, number one, there is the biggest aspect of poverty. Every single individual that we meet every single day is trying to uh, look for a way how he can provide for their family, looking for a way how they can provide for themselves, uh, just for the aspect of survival. And with this and, and the high, uh, high, high numbers of uh, youth unemployment, especially when we talk about East Africa, uh, looking into uh, high rates of, of, of um, uh, what do you call it? high rates of vulnerable communities, especially if the rates of numbers, if, uh, if the numbers of Africans is young and it is growing and growing. And you find that particular number of people are the ones who um, are being uh, affected in issues to do with unemployment. It is easier for them to be recruited uh, for, for those young people. And also for women, uh, specifically when it comes to issues to do with labor and also sex trafficking. Uh, and I always tell people, it's not just that uh, the, the illiterate ones are the ones who are always trafficked. Even those who are, are learned, those who have PhDs, those who have degrees, are also trafficked from one place to another. So uh, the aspect, uh, we need to look at it into any single person or any individual, either if it is your father or mother or brother or sister or cousin, anyone who is close to you can be, um, um, uh, can fall prey to uh, the perpetrators when it comes to issues to do uh, with, uh, with human trafficking. So under uh, human trafficking, or uh, they can be engaged in different forms of um, what you call of, of, of organized crime. Whatever we are trying to push for, and I, I think this is something that uh, I think so many people and I've been in so many discussions is to look into. There are so there are some individuals who are engaged in organized crime, especially if it comes to drug trafficking and all this uh, uh, or sex trafficking, uh, and you might find in, in, uh, that they are also uh, victims uh, when it comes to human trafficking. They were trafficked to a, to, to a specific place, then they were made to either engage in a different form of organized crime. So looking at that kind of perspectives, how do you engage with, uh, so that's the, that individual? Do you arrest them? Do you uh, tell them to call? Do you protect them? Uh, do you make sure that um, uh, when you are pro also protecting them, uh, or they are playing a really huge role in order for you to uh, identify who are the perpetrators and how are we going to um, attend these particular perpetrators. Um, when you look at well, the aspect of human trafficking, especially across East Africa, there has been a little bit of rise uh, when it comes to this. And as I mentioned earlier, issues to do with poverty, um, issues to do with illiteracy, um, uh, issues to do with uh, being part of a vulnerable community because you might be literate, uh, you, may, uh, you might be, um, what do you call, uh, maybe doing one or two or three things, but because you're part of a, a vulnerable community, they, they can use other individuals uh, to recruit you. And something that I always say is uh, that each and every single person needs to know is um, family members, uh, our, our, our pastors, um, religious leaders, that is uh, in different dominions, looking at um, those who are close, our uncles, our close family members. Most of the time, when we do a little research, we come, we come to realize that these are the highest number of uh, people who 
collaborate or partner with uh, with the perpetrators uh, who know what is happening because it is easier for them to recruit um, individuals using maybe their parents because each and every parent wants um, their child to, to, to have a better life. And if they get or hear about an opportunity somewhere, it is easier for them to um, uh, to let, uh, uh, to have uh, the child take that particular opportunity so that, because for them it is, uh, we are building a future for, 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 for our kids. So looking uh, uh, at it in that way. So these individuals who are really close to us, even friends, are the ones who are, it is easier for them to, uh, number one, manipulate, number two, have in terms of recruitment of you, in terms of uh, uh, getting into in a, in a different aspects of human trafficking, uh, and, and number three, um, uh, looking into that, the ones who are going to convince, uh, and it's easier for their, uh, it is easier for their perpetrators to reach to their target community using this, uh, this particular individuals. So across East Africa, as I said, and uh, there is been high rise of, 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 of these issues. However, it doesn't mean that uh, there are no agencies or there are no organizations or uh, the government is not doing one, two, or three things uh, when it comes to uh, issues to do uh, or like for the individual protocols that is if it is the human trafficking, if it is um, soft oil trafficking, and also if it is um, uh, some migrants. Because well, if you look at the East African community, if you look at the country like Rwanda, which has already a law when it comes to uh, with human trafficking, Kenya is also another good example yeah. that has a law when it comes to issues with human trafficking. Uh, Uganda also has laws when it comes to human trafficking. And also these countries have different uh, different policies uh, around uh, how can they combat um, issues to do with, um, that, with the different aspects of organized crime, but specifically on human trafficking and, and smuggling of migrants. Uh, in terms of uh, fire smuggling of, of firearms, uh, the discussions are, are still uh, going on and are being uh, and are being kicked off. So there are different engagements that are being done. For example, for our organizations, uh, for our organization, our key focus is to number one, uh, look into like whatever I'm doing right now, create advocacy, make people know that uh, this thing exists. Uh, the second um, engagement that uh, we also do is train uh, community members, also train organizations, also train. A government officials when it comes to um, different protocol, the, the, the protocol under human trafficking, look at what are the kinds of policies and also action plans that governments have, have developed when it comes to issues with human trafficking. Are they implemented? Because as each and every single person uh, was in, uh, did we know, um, yeah, especially across East Africa, we have really good policies, we have really good documents, but the, the disconnect becomes uh, when we look into uh, how are these uh, documents um, equivalent to action that are being done on ground? Uh, number two, how are these documents equivalent to uh, the kind of knowledge or the know-how uh, for our community get keepers when it comes to issues to do human trafficking? So for us, is to make sure that as we have all these documents, then the community get keepers, if it is community leaders, understand what is human trafficking, how is human trafficking, how does it, uh, how, how is it, uh, engaging and how do people uh, get trafficked? And uh, number two, how do you protect the, the um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, those who are now victims uh, of, of human trafficking? Uh, those who have been trafficked. Number two, how do we make sure that the perpetrators have been identified and have been prosecuted? And what kind of system is there uh, when it comes to the benefits uh, that the victims are going to be getting uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to aspects of what? Taking this people to know and just connecting them with the law makers and um, the victims getting maybe a portion of means of support of whatsoever, even if it is mental health support, uh, when it comes to uh, them uh, healing and uh, them uh, incorporating themselves into, uh, into different communities. So, how do we make sure that we are taking uh, this goal, um, this, uh, the, the, this particular objective, so that you know, how things are? And then um, people can understand. Then number three is now just create a space or an environment where uh, for the victims they're able to meet if it is meeting each other, uh, if it is meeting uh, uh, government officials, if it is uh, meeting uh, doctors or mental uh, health providers. How do we make sure that there is no disconnect between these particular groups 
that now they're able to meet, they're able to discuss, uh, they're able to sit down and plan what are the next activities that are going to help um, in terms of making sure that um, uh, these victims have been incorporated uh, in the right way uh, um, uh, when it comes to the community. And then also number two, uh, a key thing is how do you also make their voices heard uh, so that now as we are building solutions that are also part and parcel, of building these solutions because they're the ones who have unlived experience uh, when it comes to issues to the human trafficking. So how do we give that voice so that they can be at that specific table and participate and also build uh, synergy um, and get to uh, the, the different engagements? And one thing that people also need to understand is when it comes to human trafficking or as, and, and smuggling of migrants, it is something that uh, for, for, for a very long time, the perpetrators have come to understand that governments are on their uh, are, are, are on their back and uh, they have been able to be gotten. And whatever they do is they use different tactics or the different as um, different tactics in terms of uh, making sure that now uh, they can reach out to people. And one of the key things on one of the key recruitment um, avenues uh, that we know is um, internet for use of internet in terms of recruitment uh, of people. Uh, and if you look at the um, um, trafficking persons report uh, of 2022, you can see uh, things like Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok are, are, are some uh, of, of their highest level when it comes to uh, in the internet, when it comes to recruitment of different people in beauty pageants. Uh, someone looking nice and you go to Instagram and uh, in your DM, we just see yeah, in, in your DM that, aha, uh -huh, um, you have gotten, uh, we have this particular agency, we want you to be uh, maybe uh, one of our ambassadors when it comes to um, this particular product or this different kind of products. And uh, we wish that you can travel and come to this, uh, the, to this country uh, so that now you can come visit our offices. Uh, then also we can look at our way how we can employ you. So you find this way, so then someone who is coming, for example, for me as Morris and that you get good love and I'm looking for work. Uh, and um, I, I hear that someone is recruiting me and is looking, recruiting me uh, to, to to make me live uh, the kind of flash that, uh, that that I have right now and go to uh, to be able to, uh, what do you call, to provide for my family, to be able to provide uh, for myself, make sure that my life is uh, okay. It makes it easy, so I'll be. It is easier for me to be recruited and and and, and participate and and, and take part, um, you know, of, of this engagement. So, looking at it in that uh, broad uh, broad aspect. So, internet uh, these days. Uh, for funny thing is, uh, kidnapping has reduced uh, when it comes to human trafficking because so many people when we talk about human trafficking, uh, the picture that they have is Maurice uh, Maurice Andati, uh going to 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 buy bread. Uh, then when I go to uh, I go to buy bread, uh, someone sees me um, and looks at me and says, "Ah, this guy, he he doesn't fit the gym. He's, 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 he looks a little bit more nourished, so it is easier for us to to, to capture him. They capture me, then they take me to a different country. So there's a reduction uh, uh, to, to, to to that. So most of the time is it is just easily it is easier for us to post it on social media that we are recruiting people and uh, there is this particular job that people are going to get. Uh, then when uh, people uh, when people apply and all that, then we get uh, someone from our community. Then we look for a way how we can we can get them. However, that doesn't mean that we uh, do not have the right recruitment agencies out here. It doesn't mean uh, that every single person who is recruited through those particular means ends up being trafficked. No, I'm just saying that uh, these are avenues or ways in which. Uh, perpetrators have taken and, and have looked at and have taken advantage of and have seen ah so it is easier for us to recruit uh, people in this in this area then everyone has a mobile device uh we do not monitor how people engage with their devices then uh and with that uh, with that happening then it's easier for uh for the recruitment of different individuals so uh looking at it um, in, in, in different uh, in different ways so uh, maybe someone may, uh, may just then uh, so so what what is being done. Uh, like for example, at the UN, uh, and as uh, as I mentioned earlier, 
and I want to see United Nations um, against drugs and crime office. Sorry, United Nations office um, <laughs> on drugs and crime uh, developed uh, their document, which is the UNTOC, uh, which I think I've already mentioned. United Nations Convention against transnational crime and the different protocols. And they've developed these documents which countries uh, need to go and, and, and visit and then uh, make it easier for recruitment um, uh, uh, governments to... Sorry. So... Um, Someone might ask, so what, what next, or what, what is being done? So, uh, first of all, another United Nations, another United Nations office, uh, office on drugs and crime, uh, develops the UNTOC, uh, UNTOC, which is the United Nations Convention uh, Against Transnational Organized Crime, uh, which focuses majorly, and the different protocols focuses majorly on mentioning these uh, different. Uh, different aspects of, of, of organized crime that is under human trafficking, uh, that is under smuggling of, of arms, then uh, the, the third one is on smuggling of migrants. And these protocols help to guide countries in order to develop policies uh, that are going to help um, in terms of reduction uh, or, or, or elimination of issues to do with organized, uh, organized crime. So you find uh, the different policies that are under the pressure of law, uh, under the Ministry of Migration, we have a different uh, policies that are under the um, Ministry of Education. Different ministries have different, they can pick one or two or three things from these protocols, then develop uh, into their number one, internal policies, number two, um, the, the national policy, then number three, government can develop an action plan, uh, uh, which I know different countries develop uh, action plans, which uh, stay for 12 months or five, five years, depending on uh, the kind of environment that they, are, that they have developed, uh, to make sure that now they can work with the different departments in order to reduce um, aspects of uh, organized crime. And our aim is to make sure that this, um, uh, these departments and also the government uh, agencies work solely in terms of implementation of this uh, particular protocol, which I will break down the, the, the protocols in, uh, in 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 our next session when it comes to um when it comes to organized crime um uh, but with whatever they need to do is uh, with the experts uh, who are under organized crime they can go use this particular protocol or have discussions with government when they have these discussions with government sitting down private sector uh, civil society government and look for ways and also the education sector sorry uh, in to look for ways in which number one they can create an environment where um the root causes when it comes to issues to do with uh, that pushes aspects of organized crime and, and, and be, can be solved. And, uh, and as I mentioned, looking at issues to do with poverty, I've got issues to do with illiteracy, looking at issues to do with living around uh, communities, uh, communities, and also uh, looking into culture, also what culture plays, most of our culture plays a role when it comes to issues to do with, um, uh, with organized crime and go. Uh, I remember I have a friend of mine who I went to visit. Uh, was it an uncle? Uh, it's from village, a uh, village, a uh, village, 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 village. Really good friend of mine uh, went to to, to visit um, um, his uncle in Nairobi, and uh, he was going for further studies. So he had just finished uh, university. So he had just finished high school. He was going to university, and uh, the uncle had said, oh, "Okay, we are going to." Um, uh, we're going to help you get university. We're going to pay for your university fees and all that. And for any Kenyan who has joined here, you guys know one thing. Or you know the uncles or, and, and, and aunties uh, who tell you, um, can you, when you finish, give us the, um, give us the file. Or, uh, in Kenya, we call it a bahasha, uh, where we put all your documents in it. Then we are going to uh, look for a way out. We are going to get you a job. So, so such. It happens everywhere. Uh, so uh, he went to Nairobi. Uh, he was really happy because uh, for once he had gotten a, a way that he could go to, uh, to university. Uh, but it ended up being a, a different story. So he, they were, he was never taken to university. Uh, he used to work 27. 
uh, work extra hard, used to work at the uh, at the uncle's uh, shop, but then come back at home, also work uh, in the house and also the compound. Uh, he was not uh, he was not being paid. Uh, when he complained, uh, the family member said, "Ah, you know, it's your family. Do not do, do not say uh, something bad uh, or any, anything wrong." Uh, we just say be patient uh, and all that and he tried he tried to be patient uh engaged in different um uh, forced labor doing out of work working for free for for for, for the uncle uh the, the shop which was a warehouse where they used to have uh building materials cement and all this and all that he tried. He 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 totally, he totally tried. And at last, uh, when we uh, met and I had a discussion around issues to do with uh, with, the, with the labor trafficking, because when we talk about human trafficking, people just think about, oh, I want, I'm going to be taken to, to, to Arab countries, or I'm going to be taken to the northern part of of Africa, or I'm going to be taken to the southern part of Africa. Then I'm going to be picked and and doing all that. No, no, no. Sometimes it also happens uh, in the household, and mostly. You just find a uh, culture plays also a really big role. So when he had a discussion, so uh, he had to, uh, he decided to, to, to run away because he was not able to run away. He couldn't go back home because if he could go back home, they would have just uh, returned him and their uncle, his, his uncle, when they come, there is nothing that is going to be done about it. Uh, he did have a contract, he did have all, like, all these documents. He was already past 18 years, 18 years in the US, um, and when he passed, yeah. That 17 was getting into 18 because they just finished form four. Um, yeah, he was at 17. Yeah, 17. And I uh, got employed, did everything, got there, but because it was a um, family, there was nothing that still have uh, done about it. And when we had discussion and we had a complete discussion, he left. He was able to get somewhere where he was hurt. And, um, uh, right now, uh, funny thing is, is, is back to at uh, university um, uh, doing economics um, at University of Nairobi, and uh, now he's happy. He's able now to forge a uh, uh, move forward. So, and I know those who are listening to me, you have seen so many of these kinds uh, of issues. However, we brush it off. But these are the different subtle uh, forms of when it comes to labor uh, extortion when, uh, when it comes to labor. So. Our aim is when you're looking at the Ministry of Labor, what kind of policies, what sort of what kind of policies are in place, what kind of offices are in place, so that if there's someone who's going through this kind of thing, uh, they are able to uh, to go to uh, to this particular office and just talk and 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 and, and be helped. Number uh, number two, another thing that we're also thinking and also hitting my head right now is how do we also engage in a way that. The East African community is not working with individual countries, but she's working as a as one entity because we are in the East African community. Where if someone is is going through uh, this particular issue and they're in in your country, it is easier for them to um you know, to have approaches and, and, and another proper person how uh, different governments can support each other in, in order to number one uh, do research and number two do investigation and uh, number three identify perpetrators. Um, and number four, how you in terms of um, so what do you call uh, rehabilitation and also uh, uh, sending back uh, those who want who are victims uh, when it comes to issues of of, uh, of of human trafficking and also labor trafficking. And one of the key things is also uh, at smuggling of migrants, where we look at people coming into a different country, and because they don't have the right documents, or their documents are taking a little bit. Long if uh, if, uh, if they are waiting for IOL or UNHCR to uh, to provide these particular documents, then you find that people start taking advantage. And if someone knows that maybe you are you are a migrant, you are in a specific country, they know you do not understand the know very well. You don't understand the minimum wage, so they take advantage uh, of you. Then uh, it is easier for them to manipulate uh, the kind of engagement that you are uh, that you are going to have. So. Having uh, or sitting and uh, and looking at it in a pro in that particular way, and how do we help? You know, as, as a, apart from just looking at it, is how do we help or how do we form systems that are able to help these individuals so that now um, uh, we have in a born really, really, really good stringent law? As I was saying, so um, okay, 
how do we have laws, stringent laws, uh, that can, uh, number one, uh, uh, protect uh, this, uh, this individual so that now they are, they are not able to uh, be, be taken ad uh, advantage of in one way or another, so we report that. Um, how do we make sure that there is an advocacy at community so that someone like my friend, um, before he comes to uh, to Nairobi or, or maybe I'm in Rwanda right now, uh, a friend that is coming from Kenya to come to Rwanda and understand that if you're going to be recruited here in, in, in Rwanda, number one, you need a contract. Uh, number two, you need, you need a lawyer who is going to draft. You need your proper documentation. You need your passport on you. Uh, not someone telling you that I'm going to give you. You'd rather, I sometimes I'll just say it, you'd rather go to your community and let them um, give you some money so that you can get these particular documents because these are the avenues that are always um, used by the recruiters in order to hold captive uh, those that have been trafficked or the migrants that have, are, are being smuggled uh, from, one, from one place. So how do we make sure that these people are number one are covered? Number two, the law is quite clear. Number two, there is an easier model or an easier way for also getting these particular documents. Because one of the biggest things that uh, for so many people that I've, uh, I've, I've met is I've gotten, in, I've gotten this particular opportunity. I'm trying to get you know, to get my document. Um, documents, it is really hard to get a document. Someone, government wants me to bribe uh, them for so that I am able to get uh, to get a document. So you see, with also these string, you know, this um, system become a little bit difficult, it, it, it brings up the aspect of this virus. But now they're able to, uh, they, they're going to just be like, okay, you guys process the documents for me, but not paying. Then when they reach those other the countries that told, okay, uh, you are going to be, uh, we spent this amount of money on you and you have to pay it every single day. Then the wage that you're going to be paid is very low that it takes years and years uh, for you to pay up, um, pay up uh, that particular amount. So I think uh, with this, there is quite a clear understanding when it comes to, especially when it comes to issues to do with uh, human trafficking. So when we talk about uh, uh, smuggling of firearms. So, looking at the different areas, number one, how does government um, uh, take account of the firearms that have already been put out of work? Um, do they throw them away? Where do they store them? Uh, and number two, in terms of production of firearms, um, uh, which how, which type of firearms are being produced in in which specific countries? Uh, how are they being sent from one country to one country to another? Is there a recording or a system that is used to make sure that uh, there is follow-ups of these particular firearms? Then uh, now looking into for the uh, for the parties that are engaging in terms of uh, sending, uh, buying and sending of these firearms. Do they have the legal document? Do they have the proper documentation? What kind of laws are in country that held uh, in terms of number one owning a owning a firearm? Number two, what type of firearm is allowed in that particular country? Uh, to be on. Then number three, what is it being used for? Uh, uh, number four, are you said enough to to, to use uh, to use the firearm? I know, and I mentioned this upon us uh, the, 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 these these particular things in a country that comes to everyone's mind. I'm not talking about that. We are in East Africa. So, how do we make sure that um, these firearms are well protected so that they do not fall uh, to the wrong hands? However, several countries are still. On the move or taking a little bit of a cost flow uh, to it, and also try to build systems uh, uh, around it, so that now they're able to also not only just develop policies internally, but also work hand in hand, so that uh, we are not having uh, arms going to the uh, African Republic, uh, arms going to Congo, uh, based on the issue that you guys know uh, is continuing right now. Um, but how do we make sure that there is a clear understanding and the policies uh, that are in place, action groups are in place, uh, then also or making sure that government is covering. I know if, if I say government, a lot of, of, uh, a lot of people are upset, yeah, like, oh. but how do also civil society and also um, the private sector play a huge role to make sure that uh, these things are put, are put into action? That's why for the action groups also have private sector and also civil society. And with all this, I think it is just clear to, to, to really understand that uh, 
well, with the human trafficking issues, with all these particular issues, there is a couple of things that are uh, that, 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 that's happening there. when it comes to history to do with insecurity, uh, when it comes to issues to impact when it comes to uh, gender equality, uh, when it comes to impact when it comes to illiteracy or education sector. I'm, I'm not going to, if there's a place where there are not of uh, guns, uh, a community where there's a little guns, I have a friend of mine, uh, from Nakuru County, she's doing a really awesome job when it comes to uh, gang, gang-related activities and organized crime. And she will tell you, for me, if I'm living in a community where there are a lot of, a lot of gangs, there is two things if I'm a young boy. Uh, either number one, I'm going to join the gang. Or number two, I am going to be so fearful enough not even to go to school, uh, not even to work with other people, or I'll, I will leave that particular community. So having a community where there is a brain drain, uh, whatever, because I rather move to another place so that it can engage and whatever knowledge that I have can play a really usual in terms of supporting uh, my community in one way. So looking at those particular impacts and how they don't only just have short term kind of impacts, they also have long term kinds of impacts when it comes to issues to with health. Uh, when it comes to issues to do with environment, if you look at uh, well, smuggling of, of plants and crops, especially indigenous species, uh, when it comes to wildlife crime, um, looking at animals, uh, looking at the different species uh, that are there, how do we make sure that um, also these things are, uh, are quite clear and uh, uh, there, is a, a, there is a way that uh, there's an engagement. So, I think today I just wanted to do a little bit of introduction so that um, you guys can have a little bit of a clue and an understanding uh, when uh, we have discussions on the organized crime. And I think uh, for the next, uh, we'll be able now to dive deep into uh, number one, what, what is the protocol under human trafficking? What are the key things that have been mentioned when, uh, when it comes to human, to human trafficking? Uh, but the question is, uh, are there particular engagement that are being done in different countries? And maybe a question that I'm going to ask and I'm going to leave to uh, those who are watching this and also those who are listening to uh, to the podcast is, uh, have you seen or do you have particular examples of, uh, of such activities uh, in your community? And uh, do you wish on how do you wish to play a role or what kind of solutions do you feel that can be put the forefront so that now we're able to reduce the aspect of human uh, trafficking I hope that you guys are going to be fine and uh, I hope that you're going to learn from this uh, from this uh, from this podcast and I will repeat as usual please share this like uh, like this and also comment uh, because through your comments it is easier for us to to know uh, what is your understanding when it comes to this particular topic